talking about bush honeysuckle. Um, we're looking at three types today, uh, Amur, Maro, and Tatarian. All three of these come from uh, China, Japan, and Korea. They were introduced in 1846 as ornamental plants. Okay, so looking a little bit at telling the difference, it's not actually that important to know the difference um, since they're all treated about the same in, when you're getting rid of them. But Amur is more prevalent in southwestern Ohio and it's got pointy leaves. Um, Maro is more prevalent in northern Ohio. It's got oval-shaped leaves and both of these two have white flowers and hairy undersides. Tatarian, that's got oval leaves as well, but it's got pink flowers. So all three of these, they have hollow stems. Uh, and the fruits are yellow to dark red berries. The hollow stem separates it from a lot of other types of honeysuckle, so that's kind of important to notice. Put their scientific names here if you want to memorize them. Lonicera, that is kind of important. That's um, just pretty much refers to honeysuckle. Okay, uh, another type of honeysuckle, showy pink honeysuckle, Lonicera expella. That's an invasive hybrid of Tatarian and Moro. It's got really nice, pretty flowers here, but it's kind of a nuisance. Um, and then shrub bush honeysuckle, it's actually native. So it's important to differentiate this from the other bush honeysuckle species because this isn't one you'd be getting rid of. Um, as you can see, the Lonicera is actually the species rather than the genus. So that kind of, that's, if you see it on paper, you'll know the difference. And it's got yellow to reddish flowers. As you can see here, sometimes they appear orange. And then the, their stem is actually a solid pith. That means if you cut this in the middle, if you cut the middle of this right here, that would just be completely solid wood. Whereas with any of these species and this one, if you cut that, there'd actually be a hole in the middle of the wood, hollow inside. Okay, so these plants are found in understory woodlands into the edges of marshes especially, but super resilient. Um, they shade out native vegetation and outcompete, especially wildflowers, they outcompete them. Um, pretty damaging to the diversity of your habitat. They have abundant seeds spread by birds and other animals, which is how they've become so far spread. And they actually turn green earlier in the year, earlier in the spring, as compared to most plants, which gives them a head start, especially in competition. All right, so mechanical pool, mechanical control is only really effective in lower density populations in the smaller areas. Uh, so you can pull it out, although remaining roots are very likely to re-sprout. If you leave some in the ground, it's just going to come back. Some people use Pulaski's, which it's a type of axe. People also use weed wrenches, which I believe I showed earlier, and then there's several other tools you can use, whatever will pull it right out. So this is one you'd have to be checking frequently afterwards to see if it's re-sprouted. Chemical control is considered the most effective method for this with systemic herbicides. That would be Roundup, Glypro, Garland 3A, or Garland 4A. Follow your application. If there's no desirable species in the area, you just go ham and cheese, you spray that sucker all over the place. But if you're trying to uh, preserve some of your other plant species, this wouldn't be great to use since it's, it just gets everything that it touches. And you only want to use it in temperatures that are greater than 65 degrees Fahrenheit or the plant is unlikely to absorb it. And the cool thing about these things is that you can apply them to re-sprouts. Uh, in, some, in some cases, plants will become resistant to these chemicals if they've survived it once before. Not the case for these plants. You can just keep using it every year and it'll continue to be effective. Cut stump method and basal bark methods, they're good for preserving the most desirable species. So, you know, it keeps them safe and as opposed to foliar where it kills all the stuff that you also like. These are effective as long as the ground isn't frozen, so you could use them pretty much any time in the year. Um, cut stump is best done with Garland 4A. That's all. It's a short one.